Hey guys, I'm back here with a little trick. <clears throat> if you guys aren't familiar with it. So if you are, fine. If not, if you kind of... So this here is some 060-5052. It's a little bit harder to bend or shape. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I, I learned, I don't even know how long ago, from a, one of my mentors. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to kneel this piece for you guys. I'm going to show you how to make this softer. If you don't know, it's very simple. A lot of people don't understand the whole concept behind this. Um, people, as of myself and stuff, when you're in this industry, you almost become kind of like a metallurgist. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to anneal it. So first off, I'm going to start my torch. you got to have a torch. Obviously your material and maybe some clamps or something, it will get warm. So I'm gonna shoot, like right now it's pretty stiff. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clamp this to the table. It's just a quick demonstration for you guys to see how this works. As you can see, this, this flame is putting off a black soot. That's what you want. You can put a little bit of heat to it, but I'm gonna show you what happens. So I'm gonna blacken this whole panel and I'm just putting the soot down. Okay, and as you guys can see in the video, that panel is black now. Now to anneal it, what you do is you get your torch started again. I just shut it off for you guys. So you get it to where you want it. So you get the, the, the smoke to where it's barely gone. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to properly do this. So what happens, you start heating the panel. When you heat this panel, you're not trying to melt it. What you're doing, you're taking it to the verge of basically a melting point, but right underneath it. So what happens, I'm going to start doing this. As you can see, the black soot is going to start disappearing. That's when you move the flame to the next black area. You want to kind of uh, make your heat uh, variable. So as you can see, as I start heating this, this black soot will go away. And I'm just kind of kind of moving my torch back and forth, back and forth. And it's starting to lift right now because it's just clamped down. But as you can see, it's already starting to remove the soot. And what's happening, it's, it's taking it to the point of right before it, it melts to more or less when you're removing this soot so if you have some aluminum and it it doesn't matter with any aluminum so i i did the an exhaust plate for that eco bird um it's the same same difference so it was quarter inch plate is what i built that exhaust flange out of this stuff is uh like i said this is more like sheet metal so if you're having a time to beating the crap out of it with a hammer and a beating bag and you want to anneal it and make it softer, this is the trick. So I'm just going to do this whole panel and then obviously I'm going to have to let it cool, but I'll show you how pliable it goes when you do this. And I figured this would be a little trick for some of these people that are getting into this, but as you can see, it's starting to go back to this natural color. And when you burn the soot off, you're releasing the molecules in the aluminum to that you don't want and I'm going to show you right there I just put it in one spot a little bit too long I'm going to show you I'm right on the verge of melting this aluminum with this torch as you can see it's going back the metal's already wanting to move Obviously, this is a thinner panel, so it's really getting soft. Okay, I got all the soot off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let it cool. There's two spots on here where I show you where you don't have to use this cutting torch tip. You could use more like a like a brazing rod tip. Do the same thing. You can control your heat a little bit better. But I'm gonna show you. So this panel is probably still pretty warm. Yeah, she's still warm. <laughs> what 
I'm going to show you guys. So as you can see, this spot right here, I got too hot, and I'm on the, I was on the verge of melting this aluminum when I was taking that soot off. It didn't go through, I mean, this did, but I mean, the black soot doesn't go through it or anything. But as you let this cool, I'm gonna show you when it cools down that, I mean, I don't even have to. Look how easy that's bending. And it, what you're doing is you're making that aluminum, aluminum softer. You can only do it to aluminum. Steel does not do this. That's why I prefer that other metal that I use. Um, but this here, if I had, aluminum dissipates heat pretty quick, so it's still pretty warm. I'll let that cool real quick. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how easy that bends. So if you're shaping, you're trying to get a, a radical, you could use it in the English wheel and it'll just start molding to the shape. Uh, most people do this when they go to a beaten bag because I could beat the living crap out of it with a hammer and the beaten bag and you'll get sore before this panel you kind of get it to some shape you're gonna watch as easy as this bends you go over there with a hammer and you hit it right maybe on your drawing or something after you sketch it out and that thing's just gonna want to move so this is just like a little trick it's it's getting cool still warm so I'm just gonna let that cool down but <clears throat> if you're not familiar with this this is a huge game changer if you're trying to mess with aluminum and you're you're getting tired and just beating the crap out of it and you're not getting to the shape you want this makes this material more pliable you can bend it by hand it makes it less time in the English wheel less time on the beaten bag and you're gonna work it anyway. I'm not saying if you don't do this to a flat panel just to, to put a bend in it. Use a brake and it'll be fine because you want it as strong as possible. But this, for instance, this would be like beating it into a, like an egg shape and then going through an English wheel in it and getting like a teardrop effect out of it. So when I stretch it and I create a convex shape on this panel, what's gonna happen, it's gonna make this panel stronger. So, it's still kind of hot to the touch, but as you can see, it just bends with ease. It's still warm, but that is the process of annealing an aluminum. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that think that you put black soot on it and just the black soot is what's gonna make this material soft. You're absolutely wrong. This is the only way to do it, as in with a torch with the black soot process. Black soot it, burn the black soot off. When you do, like I said, you almost take it to the point of melting. And I did, I got it a little warm in these areas. Obviously, if it's a bigger panel, I'm not gonna start with a panel this big anyway. I'm gonna at least start by with like a, a 14 by 14 or something like that. And it's okay to do a little bit of that because you could work that out in the English wheel because you're gonna start mulling it whichever shape you want. But I'll show you, I mean, just, I mean, that's not a lot of pressure. You, I mean, I, and it just goes any which way that you want it to. I'm going to show you a real quick deal with a hammer of how long, how it takes to paint. So hopefully the camera don't bounce off the table. It shouldn't. So here's my shop bag. It's basically a 12 inch leather bag and I have lead buckshot in it. So I'm running the lead, a lot of people use sand, they call it a sandbag. So I'm just gonna show you for instance how fast I can move this panel. So I flattened it all back out, not perfectly flat, but as you can see it's, it's flat. I'm gonna beat a dome in the center and I'm gonna show you it's less work on my end, time is money, so I'm gonna show you. See how fast I got that around? 
And now it's cooled down, but watch. I could still bend that edge up, that one, that one, and that one. So that's how much I've stretched it just by beating it. I can go over to the English wheel and I could start working out those hammer beats and I just pre-stretched it. If you just wanted to do it in the English wheel back and forth, back and forth without using a hammer, it's gonna take you a little bit longer. It's back and forth, back and forth to start graining that crown. You've gotta have that border. Like I talked about in another video, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back. That was the video uh, for working on that Eco Bear Dash when I was English wheeling that. That's the only way you're gonna get this center to rock, pop up. A faster way would be something like this. It is noisy, but you can. I could do it like this per se. Then I can come over to my punishing hammer that's not finished. <laughs> and I could sit there and smooth this out and it's gonna stretch it too, even, you know, but I'll get it all perfectly smooth. And then if I wanted to, I can keep running on that planishing hammer and, and stretching it and stretching it just a little bit more, but I can get to my desired egg or bowl shaped. And then I can come in here, lay my template or whatever I've got, trim it, and that maybe go on the side of a car for the old sprint car style steering for the gear arm to swing through. So it's just something that I figured I'd share with you guys. Obviously now it's pretty strong. I can't bend the center out, but I could still bend these edges and I can work them and I can do what I need to do. But I wanted to share that with you guys. So if you guys are doing this in your garage and you never really kind of knew about the proper way of annealing, if you're following my channel, I'm gonna come across tips like this and stuff to kind of teach you guys. But this right here, this is something that's stuck with me since I started this in this industry. And if you know it, it helps you. And if you don't, you're gonna spend a lot of time and muscle trying to get the shape to that. Because this hammer here is very light. It's not a heavy one to beat on. I do have bigger ones, but this was a very light hammer to get that shape. So if you guys like my videos, go over there and subscribe, or if you're already a subscriber, like, comment, and I'll get back to you. But this is just something that I figured I'd share with you guys. Not a lot of people know about it, but this is the correct process to do it. The black soot just on top of the panel does not anneal the panel. You have to burn that black soot back off. And you wanna control your heat so you don't get some of those heat distortions like I did. But as you can see, just me beating, it's almost starting to disappear. So like I said, if you get those little ones like I did, you could probably work them out. You just don't wanna go so radical, it makes this material even thinner. And then when you go to English wheel it or beat it more, it's paper thin on that one edge. So stay tuned. I'll have some more videos, but I wanted to share this with you guys.